In the last couple of sections, we've looked at how we can use Internet Explorer to get online and uh, navigate through web pages. Let's have a look now at how we can personalise Internet Explorer so that it can best suit you. Now, perhaps the most obvious personalisation is to change your home page, and this is the website that Internet Explorer will automatically load when you start the browser. Here it's set to MSN. Let's say we want to set it to Bing.com. So in the address bar, we'll type bing.com and we'll go to the Bing homepage. Now in the toolbar, you'll see we have a little picture of a house. This is our home button, and if we press that, it'll take us to our home page. But next to it is a little down arrow, and here we can add or change the home page. We can set it, uh, the current page, to be our only home page, or we can add it to tabs, and you can have several home pages open in different tabs when you start Internet Explorer if you want to. We'll set this as our only home page. You also have an option, you'll see here, to remove your home page. If you're on a uh, computer where you have very limited uh, internet bandwidth, uh, you can not have a home page at all so that Internet Explorer will load without loading a page, conserving your valuable bandwidth. Now in the Tools menu, let's go down to Internet Options and have a look at what's here. Now we'll see here on the General tab we've got several options. We can change uh, our search defaults, we can change how tabs work in uh, Internet Explorer 8, how tabbed browsing, we can even turn it off if we uh, so want to. There are uh, plenty of options in there. We can change the colors for uh, web pages in Internet Explorer, perhaps to make text and backgrounds high contrast to make them easier to read. We can change the languages that Internet Explorer supports uh, when displaying web pages. We can change the fonts that Internet Explorer displays web pages in. Um, this can make text much easier to read. And there are accessibility options here as well to, again, make websites much easier to read. Then we'll go to the Content tab. In the Content tab, we can change the autocomplete settings. Now, autocomplete is a feature which uh, allows the browser to uh, predict what it is you're, you're typing, especially if it's something like a, a username or an email address that you've typed before. And uh, here we can modify the autocomplete settings and we can change those. Then in the Programs tab, <clears throat> there are options here for setting default programs. Now let's say you want to email web pages or send uh, links a lot from uh, Internet Explorer and you have an email program installed on your computer. Here you can choose which email program, if you have more than one, or if it's not configured correctly, you want to use to, uh, to set those uh, programs. Finally, there are uh, a whole series of advanced options that you can uh, have a look through. Uh, but most of these, uh, if any of them at all, uh, you'll never need to change. But a useful feature here is printing. By default, uh, in order to save ink, uh, Windows 7 will not and Internet Explorer will not print background images um, and background colours with your web pages and you can turn this feature on So you, uh, should you wish. Now, in the next section we're going to look at uh, a security feature and blocking pop-up windows. Now that we've looked at how you can personalise Internet Explorer, let's have a look at how you can keep yourself safe when you're browsing the internet. Now, one of the most annoying things on websites are pop-up windows. By default, they're blocked in Internet Explorer, um, but you may want to change the settings. So here's how. In the Tools menu, you'll see an option here for the pop-up blocker. Now, you can turn it off completely if you want to, though I wouldn't recommend it, and you can change its settings. Here we'll see there are uh, settings here. We have allowed Microsoft.com. We can remove that if we want. And if we've made a mistake, we can add it back in like so. 
we can uh, ask Internet Explorer to play us a little sound when a pop-up is blocked and to show the information bar. Now the information bar is a yellow bar across the top of the browser window uh, unless you're using Internet Explorer 9 in which case it will appear, appear at the bottom of the browser window. And there are three different settings for blocking pop-ups as well. Allow pop-ups from secure sites, block most automatic pop-ups and block everything. Now there are other options here as well in the safety menu. There's something called in private filtering. Now sometimes websites pull in content from other websites and information uh, about your browsing session can be uh, shared with these websites. In private filtering will uh, block this information from being sent and can act as a, an extra safeguard um, to uh, protect your privacy. Again in the safety menu there's something called the smart screen filter. Now by default Windows uh, Internet Explorer will automatically check websites against whitelists and blacklists um, of safe and unsafe websites and if the address bar goes red then Internet Explorer has found a website that is unsafe and you shouldn't proceed to it. If you find one then you can automatically report this website as being unsafe directly uh, to Microsoft or if you're not sure you can check the website by clicking this. So you can see here that the smart screen filter has checked this website against its whitelist and its black blacklist and it's not found any reported threats. One important thing to remember when uh, you're keeping yourself safe online is uh, to, pr to defend yourself against phishing emails. Now phishing emails, uh, and I'll spell it for you here, there you go. I'll spell it correctly for you here, is um, uh, are emails purporting to uh, be from a reputable bank or financial institution such as the Bank of America or PayPal um, asking you to uh, log into your account to confirm your account details or confirm your security details. Now the simple rule here is that no bank and no financial institution will ever email you asking you to log into your account to confirm your uh, account or security details. If needs be they'll write to you in a letter. Now there are several things you can do here. You can either just delete the email, you can forward it to abuse at and the name of the company. But if you're in any doubt, don't click on the link in the email. Go to the web address by typing it manually. So we'll go to bankofamerica.com and we can type it manually and if it is a legitimate link then that link will exist. And We can see here that the address bar has turned green uh, Internet Explorer recognises that this is a safe website. There is a padlock here we can click on for more information. So it's good to keep yourself safe online and there's plenty of advice um, uh, on how to do this. Um, I'll give you one address here microsoft.com forward slash protect has a lot of information on how to keep yourself safe when you're using the internet. In the uh, next segment we're going to look at more internet uh, security features. Now that we've looked at some of the ways you can keep yourself safe when you're on the internet, let's have a look at the different uh, security settings within Internet Explorer itself. If we go to the Tools menu on the, uh, on the toolbar and select Internet Options, we'll see here two tabs, Security, Privacy. In Security we have different security zones. Internet, Local Intranet, which is a local network, trusted websites only and restricted websites. You can choose a, a security zone that best suits you which will probably be internet but even so there are different settings and customizable settings for this zone. You'll see here a slider giving you different options for uh, websites and the content on those websites. There's also a custom level button where you can uh, enable and disable uh, specific uh, website uh, features though you will probably just want to stick with 
the slider. If you're very concerned about your internet safety, you can turn this up to high. Uh, as by default, it's on medium high. There's also a privacy tab. Now, some websites um, put uh, small files uh, called cookies on your computer and request information from your computer. And you can change the slider here to uh, allow or deny um, uh, settings from these websites based on your personal privacy, uh, personal preferences. You can also uh, manage and block specific websites here. Let's say we want to let's say we want to allow Microsoft.com um, to um, have full access when it comes to putting cookies on our computer, but we want to block another one. You type the name of the website that you want. Uh, you want to block and press the block button. Click OK when you're happy. There are plenty of uh, different settings here and they're all uh, explained in simple English so be able to choose the settings here for your security in Internet Explorer that best suit yourself. In the uh, next section of uh, uh, next segment of this section we're going to look at keeping your children safe online and parental controls. Okay, so in the last couple of sections we've looked at how you can keep yourself uh, safe online when you're browsing on the internet. But what about keeping children safe when they're online? Now we can see here um, on this website there's a, uh, a download for Windows Live Family Safety and this is a part of the Microsoft Live Essentials suite of software that includes Messenger and uh, Windows Live Mail. Um, this adds as uh, extras to the parental controls in Windows 7 and allow you to block or um, allow uh, individual websites based on uh, blacklists and whitelists of unsafe and safe websites that's automatically ma maintained by Microsoft. But there are controls built into uh, Internet Explorer. If we go to the Tools menu and select Internet Options, we can see a Content tab. First of all, at the top, there's a link straight through to the parental controls in uh, in Windows 7. There's also something called a Content Advisor. So if we click on this, then we can see here that again there's a helpful slider and we can block uh, some websites based on as we can see here things like alcohol use, gambling, tobacco use, language, sexual material and so on. So here we have a, uh, a slider control to allow us to block uh, websites except only in artistic, medical or educational context or we can block them all completely. Now this isn't a catch-all, this isn't perfect so I would always recommend uh, proper parental control and web filtering software uh, in addition. However, you can allow or block specific websites yourself in the same way as we've seen um, with uh, uh, in the previous couple of segments so you can type in uh, website names and you can say always allow this website or always block that website by clicking the always or never buttons. There are other controls here uh, allowing users to see websites that have no rating at all and uh, you can uh, uh, maintain your your supervisor uh, administrator password here at the same time. But as I say you can uh, download Windows Live Family Safety from download.live.com and there are plenty of other um, third-party uh, parental control and family safety packages available on the internet as well. In the next section we're going to start looking at how we can change some of the visual elements in Windows 7 and how we can customize it to suit our own needs.